Anyway, I don't usually like to ask my guests to repeat something straight out of their book, but I thought a really great place to start would be, as you do in Determined, with this uh, short little anecdote about turtles and William James. Oh, okay. This this is a, a an anecdote I first heard in college, and we all decided it was very cool and repeated it practically verbatim at every opportunity, and here I am many years later, and I'm sure it's still almost verbatim, about William James. So William James, William James, philosopher, psychologist, it seems that William James was giving a lecture about the nature of the universe. Um, and afterward, this old woman came up and said, Professor James, you, you have it all wrong. And he said, oh, madam, how so? And she said, the world is actually on the back of a gigantic turtle. And he said, oh, okay, but where does that turtle stand? And she said, on the back of another giant turtle. And he said, ah, but madam, where does that turtle stand? And she said, it's no use, Professor James. It's turtles all the way down. I yeah, love that. Great. I totally love that. And sort of the starting point in my book, whose main song and dance is, there is no free will whatsoever. We are nothing more or less than everything that came came before that we had no control over, um, which is, that sounds ridiculous because what I'm saying is, why did this happen just now? Because of what happened just before. And why did you do that just before? Because of what happened just before, just before, just before. It's turtles all the way down. And if it sounds ridiculous to say, yeah, it's turtles all the way down, it's absurd that this old woman in the story is coming up with that for an answer. If that's ridiculous, it's 10 times more ridiculous to instead say somewhere down there is a turtle that could float in the air. Somewhere down there, there's free will. Somewhere down there is your brain causing you to do something completely independent of everything that came before, free of its history. And that's like my starting point. When you look at how behavior is the outcome of the turtles all the way down, Every attempt to say that somewhere in there is free will, that there's a brain that could function free of its history, you're saying there's a turtle that's floating in the air somewhere down there. Mm -hmm. No, that that's great. And I'll just try to put it into my own words just to make sure that we're on the right page. I say the idea, the idea is that it's not turtles all the way down captures uh, what our, us philosophers would say are our folk belief or the pre-theoretical belief about free will. So we're maybe we're common sense dualists. And while we, we look around and we see billiard balls bounce off one another as clear cause and effect pairs, somehow our minds seem separate from all of this as if they can maybe like intervene in the world without being caused by something either beyond us or beneath us or deep within us. And I actually, this is kind of funny uh, that we're doing this podcast right now because uh, last weekend I went out on a on a date with a woman who explained to me that science has recently proven we have souls. And when <laughs> when I looked at her incredulously, she like touched my arm and said, "What did you, did you think we were just bones and hair?" As if like she were about to break something very very deep within me. Well, she's right. We're not just bones and hair. I guess I guess the invasive question, which you're free not to answer, is so will there be a second date with a soulful person? No, there there won't be. She was very she was very nice, but she was also trying to convince me of numerology. And so she asked me about like my birth date and the time I was born, and she was explaining that there's some like magic behind my birthday that I enjoyed listening to her talk about it. And she went into astrology and it was really a good example of that Popperian criticism about falsifiability because she was telling me that there was something about her astrology that meant she was extraordinarily lucky. And it just so happened that she was a Ukrainian refugee here. And when I, when I brought this up that, maybe what happened in Ukraine wasn't all that lucky, along with some other things. She was just very easily able to brush it off and, and prove that the astrology is unfalsifiable. 
Well, I think what we've we've seen in the last eight years in the world of our polarized political landscape is the possibility of you present someone with a very extremist view and set of beliefs, you present them with proof that what they believe is not the case and that they will believe it even more. That is what most of the studies have been showing with sort of the ideological sort of battles going on um, because the clearer there is the evidence that what you believe is not true. No, an election was not stolen, for example. Um, the clearer the evidence, the more you reach the conclusion of, whoa, they must be really scared if they're digging deep to come up with stuff like that to try to tell us that we're not really on to something. Yeah, Karl Popper is turning over in his grave. Um, so I guess your version, like, at least I hope it was nice when she touched your arm and told you you're more than just hair and skin or teeth or whatever it is you are. 